Thank you for watching this Syncopation software tutorial video. Syncopation software develops and supports the DPL family of decision tree software products in DPMX, a decision analysis based portfolio prioritization system. Irrespective of industry vertical, strategic business decisions are confounded by uncertainty, uncertainty that must be accounted for and quantified. Consequently, the ability to construct a parametric Excel spreadsheet model that can flexibly capture the value of many future states of the world given the uncertain value drivers is a vital skill. The people with this ability, often called analysts, decision advisors, or economic modelers, provide critical quantitative information to decision makers. Many of our video tutorials highlight decision analytic modeling techniques, tools, or features, during which I briefly mention the Excel spreadsheet that underlies the decision model. Within this set of tutorial videos, I will show you the steps to building a flexible, parametric spreadsheet model, starting from a blank Excel workbook. Such a model can be readily connected to DPL for robust scenario analyses, or for many other purposes. Valuation spreadsheet models generally fall into two broad categories those that are static and those that are parametric. To underscore the difference, I have two simple cash flow spreadsheets in front of me that look nearly identical at first glance. The MPV for the project with base case assumptions is 105 within each. Notice as I select cells within the static spreadsheet that data and assumptions are placed where they're used, name ranges are not used, and quantitative assumptions are closely tied to the base case. And when I select cells within the parametric spreadsheet, I note that data and assumptions are separate from calculations, named ranges are used frequently and consistently, and the quantitative assumptions are valid throughout the range. A good parametric spreadsheet is constructed in such a way that its key parameters can be changed without invalidating the underlying calculations, so your model can quickly adapt as the business climates change. When I attempt to change a parameter within each spreadsheet, you'll see the advantages of the parametric model. Let's assume the product launch was delayed by a year, and that marketing costs will be higher than anticipated. Within the parametric spreadsheet, these edits are a breeze to incorporate, and the calculations update as I change the parameters. Making these same edits to the static spreadsheet is difficult and time consuming. Within this video series, I'm going to build a parametric cash flow spreadsheet that will calculate the value of two competing capacity expansion plans. A manufacturer needs to expand their widget making capacity, but are unsure whether it would be best to expand an established widget manufacturing plant located in a developed market or build a new manufacturing plant in an emerging market. They also need to decide the optimal level of capacity to build into the expansion given the uncertainties around demand and costs. As with most decisions, the costs and other events that impact cash flows are different depending on the decision alternative chosen. This asymmetry will be included within the logic of the spreadsheet calculations. So starting from a blank Excel workbook, the first thing I'm going to do is name the two sheets, one inputs and one cash flow. First, on my input sheet, I'll set up the global parameters for the model, of which there are three, start year, tax rate, and discount rate. My start year for the project is 2018. I'll enter a label of start year in column B. I'll enter the year 2018 in column D. And lastly, I'll name the cell start underscore year within the Excel name box. I'll follow a similar procedure for most of the inputs in the model. Moving on, the corporate tax rate is 25%. I'll enter this below the start year with a label of tax rate, a value of 25%, and an Excel name of tax underscore rate. Lastly, I'll enter the discount rate of 10%. I'm including a discount rate because this is a discounted cash flow spreadsheet, meaning the analysis of the project employs the concept of time value of money. The time value of money is the idea that money available now is worth more than the same amount in the future due to its potential earning capacity, so future cash flows are discounted. As is typically the case, the key uncertain quantities in the model are not single numbers, but rows in a cash flow model. Consequently, on the cash flow sheet, I'll begin by setting up 16 years of cash flows with the start year, 2018, in cell D2. I'll use the Excel name range here rather than entering the year directly. For subsequent years, I'm going to use a formula that adds 1 to the cell before it. In this way, I can easily bump cash flows ahead a year or two if needed. To build up my cash flows, I'll start with market demand, which I'll separate into developed and emerging markets. Market analysts estimate that the demand will be 1,000 widgets in the developed market in the first year and 750 in the emerging market. To keep my cash flow values manageable, I'm going to divide these values and all subsequent values within the spreadsheet by 1,000. I'll apply an annual growth factor of 6% and 10% respectively for the developed and emerging market demands. I'll label and enter these demand parameters on the input sheet. 
I'm going to enter multipliers in column C and direct inputs in column D. It's important to name these ranges in Excel in a consistent manner. Now I'll incorporate these values into the cash flow sheet. First I'll enter the headers and labels for the data in column B. For clarity, I'll enter the present value data into column C. I'm not going to enter the actual values, but instead we'll reference the name ranges here again. I'll need one additional row for each market for demand by year. I'll reference the named range demand dev for 2018. Then we'll use the formula that multiplies the previous year by 1 plus the growth factor. I'm going to change the growth factor reference in cell C6 from a relative to an absolute reference by pressing F4. Now I can copy the formula quickly across all 15 rows of cash flow. I'll do the same for the emerging market. Now I'd like to see total market demand by year, so I'll calculate the sum of both markets across all years. This is the conclusion of the first Building a Parametric Spreadsheet video tutorial. I would encourage you to watch the next video in the series where I'll continue to build out the Parametric Spreadsheet model by incorporating decision switches, sales, and costs.